Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a very interesting radical equation. We have square root of x plus square root of negative x equals square root of 2 and we're going to be looking for x values. I'll be presenting three methods but before we get started with the methods let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of the function on the left hand side. Here's the graph. There's no graph. What is going on? Okay, so here's the problem. This is not well defined for real numbers. So we have a problem. The problem is because of the radical or the square root function, x needs to be greater than or equal to zero, right? But at the same time, negative x also needs to be greater or equal to zero, which implies that x needs to be less than or equal to zero. So in order to have these two conditions together, x must be zero, but that's just going to mean what a single point, zero comma zero which is not shown by Desmos, by the way. I don't know why. Anyways, let's get started with our first method. So for our first method, we're going to do the following. Uh, let me rewrite the original equation. Square root of x plus square root of negative x equals square root of 2. I'm going to isolate square root of negative x and write it as square root of 2 minus square root of x. This kind of makes sense when you have a radical, especially more than one radical, you want to isolate one of them and square both sides. You could also square both sides when the radicals are on the same side. That could probably be you know, the fourth method, or maybe I'll just replace the second method with that, because first and second methods are otherwise very similar. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and square both sides here. And that's going to give us negative x equals... Square root of 2 squared is 2 plus x minus 2 times the square root of 2x. Let's go ahead and put some um, radicals together. Maybe I'll just isolate 2 times the square root of 2x here, and everything else I'll put on the right-hand side. So that's going to be 2x plus 2. We can definitely go ahead and divide both sides by 2. That's going to give us square root of 2x equals x plus 1, because this is 2 times x plus 1, right? Great. Now, let's go ahead and square both sides one more time. And obviously, squaring both sides might introduce extraneous solutions, so on and so forth. Something we have to check at the end. When you square both sides, you get 2x equals x squared plus 2x plus 1. Remember the formula for a plus b quantity squared, which is very important in algebra. Now, 2x cancels out. We end up with something real weird, which is not real, actually, right? Okay, x squared plus 1 equals 0. No real number squared plus 1 can be 0 because no real number squared can be negative 1. So this is problematic. So the, to solve this problem, we have to use complex numbers or imaginary numbers. So the solution would be x equals i and x equals negative i. So i is defined as a number whose square equals negative 1. If you square negative i, you also get i squared, so it's also negative 1. Make sense? So we kind of get two solutions from here. That is the end of the first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. So for my second method, I'll do the following. I was thinking about maybe doing it with the negative square root of negative x, but I think this is going to be more interesting. Let's go ahead and square both sides without putting the radicals on different sides. Couldn't we do that for any radical equation? Of course we could. When you square a plus b, like before, a squared plus b squared plus 2ab, right? Equals 2. Awesome. x and negative x cancel out, and we end up with something interesting. Uh, square root of x times negative, uh, square root of negative x is going to give us, by the way, 2's cancel out, 2. So from here, we get the square root of negative x squared equals 1. Hmm, that's kind of interesting, right? Which number can give us that? All right, so if you square both sides one more time, you get negative square root of uh, negative x squared equals 1, x squared equals negative 1, and we end up with the same results. Okay, so those are the two answers. And let's go ahead and take a look at the third method, right? Okay, so far, let's kind of summarize, recap what we did. So we were given this interesting equation. We first checked the graph. There's no graph because um, you don't have a set of points that would generate the graph because x can only be 0 in this case, and obviously 0 is not a solution, right? So we kind of squared both sides and we got complex, non-real solutions, right? First method involved isolating square root of negative x. You could also do that with square root of x, same thing. 
Uh, and then the second method, without isolating radicals, we just square both sides and we got the same thing. So it doesn't matter whether you isolate or not isolate. Let's go ahead and take a look at the third method and then we'll finish up with that. All right. So my third method, I actually like the third method because, not because it's the third method, but because um, it's different from the other ones. So it kind of uses a different approach, which is nice. And I know, you know, square root function is not well defined, so on and so forth. Let's keep all those stories. Let's just solve this problem. Okay. Now, here's what I'm going to do with square root of negative x. So let's go ahead and work it out a little bit. Square root of negative x can kind of be written as square root of negative 1 times x, don't you think? And then, uh, instead of negative 1, I could also separate them, but, you know, that's all in doubt for real numbers. So I'm going to replace negative 1 with i squared, because by definition, right, by definition, um, i squared equals negative 1. And now, we can go ahead and split them up. When we split them up, we're going to get, what is the square root of i squared? Well, in the complex world, it has two square roots, uh, plus i and um, minus i, or plus minus i. Okay, so this is going to be plus minus i, and of course, you still have to have the square root x over there. Okay, so this is what we got. Let's go ahead and replace square root of negative x with that. So plus minus i times square root of x, and that kind of gives us, and this is equal to square root of 2, by the way, uh, that allows us to factor out square root of x, right? So that's going to be square root of x multiplied by 1 plus minus i equals square root of 2. Now, initially, if you do this problem like i square root of x, you're going to get one solution. But we know that there are two solutions. That's why we do need the plus minus sign. Make sense? Okay. So now let's go ahead and go with each root 2. You get 2, 1 minus i squared divided by 4. This cancels out, leaving us with a 2. And then from here, if you expand that, you're going to get 1 minus 2i plus i squared divided by 2. The i squared is negative 1, so these two cancel out, leaving us with negative i. So that's going to be one of the solutions like before. And let's go ahead and take a look at the other solution, how we get that. It's very similar, but let's just go ahead and go through the steps. First, divide both sides by 1 minus i and then rationalize the denominator as before. And then once you multiply, you're going to get square root of 2 times 1 plus i divided by 1 minus i squared, which is 1 plus 1, which is 2. And then you're going to square both sides and get 2 times 1 plus i squared divided by 4. 2 goes into 4 2 times. And this gives us 1 squared plus i squared plus 2i. But i squared is also negative 1. These two cancel out, leaving us with 2i divided by 2. Twos cancel out, leaving us with i. So x equals i is another solution along with negative i. So the solution set is going to be negative i and i. In other words, this equation has no real solutions. The only solutions are complex and imaginary and non-real solutions. And those are negative i and and this brings us to the end of this video. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.